I've been really lucky. I've played with a lot of phenomenal musicians in my life. Uh, Clarence White, playing with Clarence, you had the feeling that he was connected to something. He was privy to some kind of source, some kind of information that you were lucky to be in the proximity of. You, know, you, you were actually on stage with a guy who could play like that. Uh, Gene Parsons sort of pretended like he took it for granted because they were such buddies. But we were all in awe of Clarence. And Roger, I think it was difficult for Roger because Roger just, it was like he would constantly defer to Clarence. So maybe that's another factor in, in the mix on the uh, Dr. Birds and Mr. Hyde, that Roger's confidence level may have been somewhat down or his respect level was up so high that he just, he might have even said to Bob, you know what, Bob, just keep me down the mix and let it be Clarence. I don't, I don't, I don't know. But playing with Clarence was, I mean, it, it had a, a lot of humor in it too because, okay, the audience is out here, I'm here in the middle, Roger's over here, Gene's back there, Clarence is here, and this wall, there's a wall of guitarists, you know, all guys in those days, who bought a ticket, but instead of staying in their seat, they're standing up along the wall with their mouths open, trying to figure out, what the hell is he doing? How does he play like that? And, you know, the string bender was relatively new, so we don't know how much people were aware of that there was a mechanism that he controlled, you know, with pressure on the strap. But he could bend up on one string and then have the string bender drop another string. Something you cannot do on the guitar. You can't play. You can't bend one note up and then drop another note down. At the same time, it's impossible. You know? So uh, we used to laugh about that. We used to laugh about a wall of guitar players at every gig trying to figure out, how is that guy doing that? You know? But yeah, he was a absolutely brilliant, brilliant musician. And uh, courageous, because he, like Chris Hillman, he had stepped out of this world that was very much against uh, lowering your pure stance. You're a bluegrass guy. Well, what do you want to play that crap for? What do you want to play loud and electric? And What do you want to do that for? But I think Clarence, to his credit, saw another horizon, another place where he could take his playing. And he, I mean, he used for um, Ballad of Easy Rider, he got this idea he wanted to play through a Leslie speaker, which is something that normally you put a Hammond organ through. And Terry Melcher found a small Leslie. We put mics on either side. Great sound. Well, you know, Clarence's musicality through a, a Leslie speaker. No one had ever done that. So he was very adventurous, very adventurous musician and, and fearless. You listen to some of those solos, the way he played is just phenomenal. You know, just the energy level. Uh, he had fluidity. He had a, a kind of syncopation where he could just bounce through things, right? So he could create an, a rhythm on top of a, a rhythm. Uh, but he embraced the technology to the point where he, he could create a guitar line that just sounded fierce, fierce guitar solo, you know. So yeah, he constantly blew our minds. 